Hello and welcome to Infinity. In our series on blend modes, we now come to the Color Burn blend. Uh, just a reminder on blend modes that you start off, you have a base layer. On top of that, you have a blend layer to which is associated a blend formula or blend mode. And this is the color blend that we're doing for this. And you end up, you can see then the result. Color Burn is part of the Darken blend. So guess what? Darkens. It is far less often used than darken or multiply apply, but it nevertheless has some very, very useful things about it. I think a lot of people just don't know about it too much. So we're going to do something about that. The calculation is something like this for each of red, green, and blue. So it's calculated in separate red, green, and blue channels for each of the blend and base layers. And the calculation looks like this. It's like this down here, but if it's more familiar format, if you write it down with a pen, that it is how you do it. The reason that you've got this bit here, if the blend is zero, then the result is zero, is to handle the case where you've got zero on the bottom here, because if you divide by zero, you get infinity. And computers have no idea what to do with infinity. So, so let's look at something that's going to be uh, bit practical and see it in action. So there we go. So here we got then a gradient going from black to white. And this is effectively is our base layer. And on top of that, we're going to put a rectangle, which is the blend layer. And this is 50% gray. And then if we change the blend mode. When we go to darken, you can see what happens there. The gradient sort of wins the battle because it's darker in the top half there than from the left half. And then the uh, rectangle takes over on multiply. I mean, goes all the way from black down to the the whites are pretty much squashed there because it, it's the way that that works. However, when you get to blur, color burn, look what happens here. Here you've got the left half here is gone completely black, and it's no coincidence that this is fifty percent gray. But then once the, it starts appearing through, you get a complete spectrum all the way from black through to white. So whites are not lost and this is really useful. So effectively what you can see what it's doing is darkening shadows here in a controlled way and preserving whites. And that is jolly handy. So if we change the color of the top layer, sorry, the, yes, the, the blend layer, say as we make that layer darker, that we're pushing the blacks then right up all the way up to the end. And even when you get to the very end, white still kind of wins. And whereas you go down to the other end, then the blend layer, when it's white, is completely invisible, as with all the darken modes. So on a picture, what does this look like? Here's the picture. Hit Control J to duplicate it. And then change the blend mode to darken, nothing happens. Multiply, everything goes darker. Color burn, the shadows go much darker, but the whites are still preserved. So you've got yourself effectively a darkening device. And if I just bring this back this way a bit, you can see that the, as you bring the opacity down, you know, the shadows come back. So effectively, you've got yourself a thing for darkening shadows. The other thing to note with it is the, the colors are deepened as well. So you need to work on that. I am going to do a separate video, by the way, on more detail on how you can use this. And so let's go back to the slides here and um, bring out then the key points. So the key point is that whites stay white as they don't with multiply. Um, shadows are strongly darkened. So it's got that powerful darkening effect. Um, the black to white spectrum is effectively squeezed, so you still get the black to white, but it's pushed up as you push up in the shadows. Uh, and it's not swappable, in other words, or you can say it's non commutable, which means you can't just take the blend and base and swap them around and get the same effect as you can with the um, darken and multiply blend modes. Typical uses um, darkening shadows is useful, uh, as we've seen there. Um, preserving whites. If you also get deepening colors, so that's a th thing that you can do with GSU to make the colors darker and deeper, which is sometimes a nice thing to do. 
uh, and you get the deeper burning effect. So you can use it as in, in a dodge and burn environment. And you can do the same with multiply, but this you kind of get this deeper effect. Anyway, that's it for now. And I'll come back with more detail in two other videos on this. One's going to be about the calculations, because I know not everybody likes the sums. And another one's going to be about practical uses of it. Okay, thank you very much for watching.